Welcome to the Wellness for Women show, where we talk about life, weight loss and everything in between. I'm Faye Caseman, founder of the AAA Way Life and Weight Loss Programme, and I'm here to help you put together the pieces of life and weight loss for one last time. This is an episode of the Wellness for Women show, filmed live in the free Facebook group. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode number 80 of the Wellness for Women sh- show. Sh- sh- show, sh- sh- show. <laughs> it is filmed live. I don't edit the I don't edit this for the podcast or the YouTube because life is busy enough. You would get this live and raw. This week it's all about finding purpose through weight loss. So have you ever felt like life is passing you by, just moving through the motions without any real sense of purpose? I know that feeling all too well. That was me stuck in Groundhog Day, life on repeat, feeling like something was missing but didn't really know what to do about it. I felt trapped in routine, going through the motions of everyday life without a real passion or excitement. And it seemed like I was just merely existing rather than truly living. Every morning I'd wake up to the same alarm clock blaring in my ear and reluctantly drag myself out of bed and into the shower. And then the days would just blur on autopilot. And I was yearning for something more, although I didn't realise it at the time, something that would ignite, ignite a spark in me and bring back purpose to my life or maybe actually give me purpose because I'm not sure that I actually had it at, at any point until I found it. But where do you even begin when you feel so lost, when you have bought into the belief so hard that this is just life, that you just have to get on with it, that you just have to suck it up buttercup as this is your lot? And in the hustle of everyday life as well, it's easy to lose ourselves, to find ourselves again yearning for this something more, something more meaningful. But yet what? And how the hell can I find the time to find it anyway, whatever it is? And in a way, I didn't find my purpose. Purpose found me. And it was from a place that I least expected it, my weight loss journey. And today I want to talk to you about finding purpose and how I did it through weight loss and ultimately how you can too. So it's been a little while since I've done um, an actual introduction. I used to do this all the time in the in the podcast, but I am Faye Caseman. I am a life and weight loss coach. I am also a trainee belief coding facilitator. And ultimately, my aim is to help as many women as I can to ditch diet drama, find more joy in the process through my method, the triple A way. And it's all about finding finding your way through life and weight loss with more love. I think we're all used to we're all used to the restrictive diets that we used to go on, calorie counting, points, cutting out food groups, whatever it might be. And ultimately they didn't work for a reason. And a lot of that comes out of our beliefs and thoughts. And so I am here to help you to change your relationship with food, to go deep and to really change how you show up around food. And a big part of that is about life as we're going to talk about in this episode. So let's start off with about losing our way. So one of the things that's ingrained in all the teachings that I've had as a life coach and a belief coding facilitator is that we're all born infinitely worthy and self-worth can very much link into purpose. So if we're born worthy and worth is connected to purpose, how did we lose it along the way? How have we lost it to the point where we have impacted our mind, body and soul and compromised our overall wellness such as, so it won't surprise you to hear if you've listened to the show at all, that it comes from our beliefs. Those again, various external influences and internal struggles we've had from a young age, societal expectations and pressures. We may not have developed our own true inner voice or we may have lost it along the way with the various failures, rejections or disappointments that's chipped away at our self-worth. And I'll just chip in there that dieting and traditional dieting certainly can have that impact on us and it can damage our relationship with food. Because this is the thing, you know, ultimately it's about life. And life has this uncanny way of throwing curveballs in our way, things that change our trajectory, things that we can try and dodge and swerve, things that hit us square in the face and things that we will embrace knowingly. 
Now, you can lose your way and purpose due to life events, such as maybe becoming a parent, getting married, becoming an empty nester, like I'm going to be next year, uh, getting divorced, maybe having a death in the family, a uh, change in health, the uncharted waters of retirement or a new job. And these moments can catch you off guard, leaving you feeling adrift and searching for meaning. Maybe you're actually stuck right now, right at this very second, at a crossroads, unsure of which path to take. And maybe you feel like you lack clear goals or direction in life to the point where you aren't really sure who you are or who you want to be. And this doubt and uncertainty can certainly be a formidable adversary in the pursuit of purpose. And it's like navigating a maze without a map, which can then lead to feeling frustration and further that sense of aimlessness and feeling adrift. It could be that you are struggling to find balance with conflicting priorities. You could be struggling to face past failures or dealing with disappointment that's left this shadow over whether the purpose you thought was your purpose is really your purpose, your goal or your aim. And this definitely most, most definitely can come up a lot in weight loss, that endless questioning of why the hell am I not sticking to my plan? Why am I not doing what I said I would? I know working on my health and well-being will benefit me, so why do I keep sabotaging? And it's very easy to get lost in the fog of what should have been or what could have been and for judgment to then set in. You could be trying to live a life that doesn't align with your core values and belief this misalignment leaving you with a profound sense of disconnection, leaving you yearning still for a life that resonates more with your true self. And I did an episode on values the other week. Emotionally, self-doubt and fear of failure could be a crippling force for you as well, as they whisper in your ear, telling you that you're not capable or that pursuing pur purpose is a futile endeavour. Your identity, of course, can be intricate intricately woven into your sense of pro purpose and you could have lost sight of who you are and that purpose is feeling hazy. So if any of these struggles, anything that I just said resonates with you, then very much stay with me through the rest of this podcast. So why bother? Why bother finding purpose? Why not just continue to tick through life, bouncing from day to day? Maybe it feels comfortable and safe but yet deep down you know that you're always missing something. And when you discover or work on discovering your true purpose, life becomes more than just going through the motions. It ignites a passion within you and it gives meaning to every action that you take. And suddenly every day holds the potential for growth and fulfillment. Finding purpose also allows you to align your values with your actions. So instead of, again, merely existing, you start to live intentionally. You become more aware of how each decision impacts not only yourself, but those around you. And that purpose then empowers you to make choices that can contribute positively to your own well-being as well as the greater good. And additionally, having a clear sense of purpose provides a solid foundation during times of uncertainty and adversity. And when faced with challenges or setbacks, knowing why you are doing what you do gives you the strength and resilience to keep going. It helps you to stay focused on your long term goals and overcome any obstacles that might be in your way. And having purpose then can also enhance your personal relationships. So when you're aligned with those values and you're living intentionally, it becomes easier to connect with others who share similar passions and beliefs. And this creates a deeper connection based on mutual understanding and support. And again, allowing just for those meaningful relationships. And as you strive towards fulfilling your purpose, you're going to learn some new skills, you're going to gain some knowledge, you're going to expand your horizons and the pursuit of purpose pushes you out of the comfort zone as you start to take some risks and start to embrace challenges that lead to personal growth and in your weight loss journey connecting with your purpose can also help you with clarity and motivation. You can feel more inspired to make healthier choices, to stay committed to your goals and navigate challenges with resilience. 
and again understanding yourself more going deeper into the reasons behind your desire for change can then also help you to cultivate a lasting positive relationship with your body and your overall well-being which is a huge message for me with weight loss weight loss for love rather than just doing some kind of fad diet or doing a system that just doesn't suit you that you can't stick at that makes life suck and again most importantly you're going to start to believe in your own inherent worth and you can start to truly 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 recognize your value and that goes way beyond what we look like physically and again this can then guide you on your unique purpose or calling in life maybe so how does that sound to you how does that sound? Let me know. If you're watching on a video, let me know. If you're watching on pod podcasts, watching on podcasts, listening on podcast, uh, certainly on Spotify, there is a section where you can leave your comments. And so why purpose through weight loss? That's the next question. Why purpose through weight loss? Well, I can actually, I actually think you can find purpose and meaning in any journey that you undertake. Actually, the journey that's more important in the end. But sometimes you only realise that when you get to the end of a journey. But any undertaking that you do, if you go looking for it, but weight loss certainly through the method I teach at least will helps you because it helps you to go deeper than the diet then it will help you to create deep change like I say not some some fad that you're really going to give up on and by going deeper than the diet becoming more mindful about what you do how you do it why you do it in food and life you can't then help but notice other things that you would like to change other things that you would like to work on and at the heart of the AAA way method is mindful living. It's not just about what you eat. It's about how you approach every aspect of your life. And mindful living will be, bring you that presence in your life. So you aren't just a passenger. You, you're you going to want to start to take more control. You're going to want to start making choices that aligns with your true self. And as you start to weave that mindfulness into the fabric of your existence, you can't you, you're just going to unlock a richer, more purposeful life. You can't help but find purpose or purpose can't help but find you. And then we have intuitive style eating. So I call it intuitive style eating because weight loss officially is not part of normal intuitive eating. It should reject all diet mentality. So I call it intuitive style eating which ultimately transforms the way you relate to food. So again, it's not a, a set of rigid, rigid rules. It's a practice of tuning into your body, understanding your hunger and fullness, and developing a compassionate relationship with yourself and your food. And again, it goes beyond the food on your plate. It changes the relationship that you have with food and with yourself. And you'll start to break free then from the restrictive chains of traditional dieting and cultivate that a more harmonious connection between your body, mind and your soul. So how does this all tie into purpose? Well, again, mindful living and intuitive eating, it's going to guide you towards a healthier, more purposeful life as they both help, as they, both of them help you to foster a deep understanding of yourself and as you start to see and recognize the import the importance your choices have on your well-being not just physically but emotionally and if it's important to you spiritually too you can can't help but again start to look for more you're not only going to change your body but you just in some cases almost your entire way of being and we go looking for more joy delight in nourishing ourselves and finding more peace because we're looking to cultivate self-love as well and to work on embracing a lifestyle that actually aligns with our actual unique path and we work on something that we work on this in a way that literally fits you through every season of your life a question another question for you does that all sound too good to be true maybe it feels a bit impossible right now but just imagine if it was not how would you feel how much better would life be if you were living it with intent and purpose so let's dive into that a little bit more and explore how you can actually make this a reality so how can you start living a purposeful life and it starts with shifting our mindset 
course it does, because everything starts with our beliefs and our thoughts and realizing that we actually have the power to create the life that we desire. So ask yourself, do you believe that change is actually possible? And if it's not, then that's probably one of the first things that we need to work on together. So I've been looking at the work of Byron Katie recently, specifically around sabotage and un our unconscious beliefs and our subconscious, as well as going with that. And what happens when we don't believe that we can change and what happens if being if if we if we don't feel worthy. And so there's actually a list of, of things that I was looking at about subconscious blockers and just sort of applying them to, to weight loss. But again, no surprises that not believing that we can change and not believing that we are worthy would feature heavily in that list, list of sabotage. Because, of course, if we don't believe that we could change, we're not going to change. Because if you don't believe that you will, then you won't, because... You've got to believe that you can to then take the actions. You're not going to have the emotion. You're not going to then take the actions if you don't believe that you can. And also as well, if you don't believe that you are worthy, you won't take the steps, the action steps that a person who thinks they're worthy will do. And therefore you won't take those actions because you just won't have the emotion to it. But the truth is, we're not stuck with our current circumstances. We are not limited by our past experiences unless we believe we are. And so by embracing the belief that you can grow and evolve, you're going to open yourself up to endless possibilities. And this, again, is what my journey brought me. I started to see and find and go looking for possibilities. I started to believe that every day was an opportunity and one that I didn't want to miss going through a haze like I had been for decades. So finding purpose is also about finding joy and fulfillment. So I love the concept of being in flow. I don't know whether you've ever heard of flow or flow work or being in flow. I'm not even going to try and say the name of the book's author because I am terrible, absolutely terrible with names. You're going to have to check the blog or ask me and I will link it down below. I struggle even with his first name, but the book is called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. I'm trying to decide if I'm brave enough to have a go at saying it. Mihaly, Trissa Mihaly, it's not even vaguely like his name. I'm very sorry, Mihaly. My pronunciations are horrendous. Or you could check out The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. <laughs> And say that one just terrible with names both of them though I felt had a very similar vein to them that finding joy and fulfillment in life is closely tied to discovering our purpose when we're aligned with our true calling we experience a sense of flow and contentment that's more than just mere happiness it's that time where everything just feels like it falls into place effortlessly and we become fully present in every moment and so both of them talk about in their books about how we engage in activities or how engaging in activities that align with our core beliefs our core strengths uh, when we do those things and when it's got the right level of um, challenge to it time can just seem to melt away and so we can feel so even though we can be very busy doing whatever it is that brings us into that flow state we will feel energized rather than depleted and so basically ultimately if you find enjoyment if you find joy in whatever it is, is that, that you are doing you will find that flow state and like I say time will just squish itself I think it's Gay Hendricks in his book, although it might have actually been, it might have been Einstein actually. Again, terrible with quotes, very bad memory. There was an analogy about putting your hand on a hot plate, that if you put your hand on a hot plate, it's it's gonna it's gonna feel like a it, it's gonna feel like an eternity. Whereas if you if you put it on a warm heart or something, I really can't remember the I can't remember the quote, so I'm just butchering it. But again, it was just all about the, the the lapse of time, really, and how time can still seem to melt away. You know, so if you're spending time with a loved one, I think the theory was then time will just melt away and it won't feel like you've been there for long because you've been in this joyous moment, whereas putting your hand on something hot and painful would feel like forever. So it's basically saying that time is relative. It's about what you think and feel.
Anyway, both of the books emphasise the fact that purpose isn't actually something external waiting to be discovered. It's something inherent with us. So it's internal to us that we have the power to create meaning in our lives by pursuing what brings us joy and utilising our unique talents. And then we can find flow. And in that flow, there is also purpose. And it's and there's purpose there in all that you do. I quite often talk about emptying the dishwasher, so I'm going to talk about it again. So <laughs> you take emptying the dishwasher. You could think, ugh, I've got to empty the bloody dishwasher again. Or you could celebrate the fact that you've got a dishwasher because there's a lot of people who don't celebrate the fact that you've got dishes. And that actually by emptying it, you're creating order and contributing to the smooth functioning of your home. And again, just that small shift of focusing on the satisfaction of completing a task efficiently and creating a clean space for yourself and your loved ones, you can even infuse, even in mundane activities, some kind of sense of purpose. It's, it's all about mindset shifts, ultimately. And again, in, in, the, in the flow book, it was talking about how you could have somebody who is, say, in a working on a factory line and it's very much methodical work. And you've got somebody who will absolutely hate that whole experience. And then you've got another person who literally they just get in their groove, they get in their flow with it. And, and they're just even enjoying that so they can even enjoy the, the, the monotony of that. They're both really quite powerful books to have a read of or listen to or at least look at the summary of. But again, it's all about knowing yourself and working on your thoughts and feelings, which is what we do in the AAA Way membership or is what I do when I work with one-to-one -one clients. So members, you've already got access to your guide on identifying your values treasure map that landed a few weeks ago but I will be looking to put together a resource for this episode as well which is going to be something around finding your passions finding your purpose identifying your strengths that kind of thing so that you can find more purpose through that so again both authors also suggest seeking out new challenges stretching ourselves beyond our comfort zones so whether it is learning a new skill or taking on a project that pushes your limits a little bit or maybe joining a membership that would you know help you to challenge yourself and develop yourself all of these things you know all of the experiences that you go through can help you to uncover some hidden talents or passions you may not know existed so again, let's say as a member working on weight loss with me, we're going to look to stretch ourselves daily with some power ups and they can be in life or they can be in weight loss. We also go about super sleuthing and being the detectives of our lives and our weight loss journey. And that's a journey of self-discovery and that ultimately can lead to and create purpose um, because we are ultimately looking to try and become the best version of ourselves in any given moment. And in doing so, we can then also start to find meaning outside of ourselves as well, because as we start to work on ourselves, that will then have a ripple effect, contributing positively to others' lives. You know, whether it be your children, your partners, your parents, your co-workers, friends or people in the street that you meet. As you start to shine brighter and brighter, as you start to nourish yourself, as you start to go beyond just that physical nourishment and look after your mental, emotional and spiritual well spiritual well-being as well so too then will those around you reap the benefits of that and they might even see you know you might inspire them to start doing some work themselves or if nothing else they would just feel the shift in you and ultimately if you are wanting to work on your relationship with others or improve your work or career or your business whatever it might be it all starts with your beliefs about yourself Okay, right. That is it, folks. I'm going to wrap things up. I will leave you with your thoughts about your journey of self-improvement and how it's not just about your, your own personal growth, but about how it can then make that positive impact about those around you, how it can create purpose as you work on becoming that best version of yourself so that you can then again perhaps become a source of support, inspirational motivation for other people. And I would also encourage you to have a little look at those books that I mentioned. If you can't find them, let me know and I'll, I'll shoot you some links. And again, just seek out ways to find flow, to challenge yourself, to find joy in everything that you do, to identify what your values are, your strengths, your true capabilities, and to go beyond, beyond what you're currently 
currently doing and just push yourself gently with love out of your comfort zone regularly. And that's it. So until next week, I'm going to love you and leave you. And I will say goodbye for now. Bye for now. Thanks for listening. And don't forget, if you want to boost your life and weight loss the AAA way, check out the relevant links for today's show in the description. Speak soon.